Okay, so in this example we're looking at a steam turbine. It's an isentropic steam turbine and it's got an inlet temperature of uh, 700 degrees Celsius, an inlet pressure of 10 megapascals and we're told it's got an outlet pressure of uh, 0 0.4 megapascals but we don't know what the outlet temperature is here okay so so we're using this information that the system is isentropic to actually get this outlet temperature so for an isentropic system what we know is is that the uh, entropy in is equal to the entropy out okay so so this fits in with our assumptions so we're assuming that uh, first uh, it's at steady state okay so we're not interested in the dynamic behavior of this system two it's isentropic like we we're told and three uh, it's pure steam okay so there are no contaminants in this system so our first step to find this outlet temperature is to find where uh, to find what the entropy is at these inlet conditions so I go to my uh, steam table okay and so I'm taking my steam table from Koretsky again and so I'm looking at 10 megapascals and 700 degrees Celsius and so my conditions are here okay so I get an inlet entropy of this and an inlet enthalpy of this uh, as well so so I'm going to use this information uh, a little bit later on so if I go back to uh, my example here so my entropy in is equal to 7.17 kilojoules per uh, kilogram and also my enthalpy in is equal to uh, 3870.5 kilojoules per kilogram Okay, so, so I'm going to need this to figure out the, the work produced a little bit later on. And so now to find what my outlet condition is, I need to find at what temperature my entropy is this for my outlet pressure of 0 0.4 megapascals. So I go back to my data. Okay, so I scroll down to uh, 0 0.4 megapascals. Okay, here it is, 400 kilopascals, and I'm looking for 7.17. So I go up my entropy data, and there it is. Okay, so at 200 degrees Celsius, I've got an entropy of 7.17 uh, uh, kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So if I go back to uh, my problem, okay, so uh, so my, my entropy out is, or my temperature out is 200 degrees uh, Celsius, and my enthalpy at this stage is equal to uh, 28, oops, get rid of that, uh, 2860, 0.5 kilojoules per kilogram okay great so now I go back to my energy balance uh, for this system okay so uh, dm u to t is equal to uh, q dot minus my work uh, plus m in h in uh, minus m out h out 
uh, minus p to v to t. Okay, so so I know that my system's at uh, steady state, so nothing changes with time, so I can get rid of those varying with time terms. Now, I looking at this, I can see I need work. I've got a flow coming in and a flow coming out, but what about this heat term? So I actually missed out on my heat term in my assumptions, so I'm going to put it in now. So I'm going to say that my my system is adiabatic. There's no heat going on, and I can see that from my system diagram, so I shouldn't have really missed it in the first place. Okay, so when I write that out, then I get... Okay, forgetting my hats. Okay, and so then from my mass balance, okay, at steady state, no reactions, uh, then my mass in is equal to my mass flow out is just equal to my general mass flow. So I can say that my work is equal to the mass going through the system, H in minus H out. Okay, so so I know what uh, those H values are. So, and I also uh, know what my what my mass flow is. Okay, so my mass flow is up here. It's 10 kilograms per second. So 10, 3870.66 minus uh, 286. Okay, and so uh, taking these two things away from each other is 10,100 uh, kilojoules per second and that's equal to a 10.1 megawatt uh, turbine. Okay, so so that seems pretty good, okay, and that of course is for an isentropic efficiency equal to 1. Okay, so so for the case where we don't have a reversible turbine, so so the next example is for an irreversible turbine and so it's the same turbine, same inlet conditions, same outlet pressure. The difference is that we've now we've now got an efficiency term. So We've got slightly the opposite problem. The the energy balance is still exactly the same. Okay, so we we still got my shaft work is equal to m dot h uh, in minus h out. Okay, so the the real work. Uh, that we're going to do uh, for this is equal to the ideal work times by the uh, the isentropic efficiency. Okay, so so uh, ten thousand one hundred multiplied by zero point seven. Okay, so so now that we've got that, if we want to, we can find out what the outlet temperature is. So we're just rearranging the equation above. So my my outlet enthalpy is equal to uh, H in minus the work done divided by the uh, no, not divided by the isentropic efficiency, divided by the uh, divided by the mass flow rate in the system. Okay, so so the inlet conditions haven't changed. 
Okay, so that inlet enthalpy is still the same. Our real work is here. And then our mass flow rate is still the same as well. So three, three, one, six, three point five. And so that's uh, kilojoules per kilogram. Uh, and the pressure is still uh, 0 0.4 uh, megapascals. So we can find the pressure that corresponds to that enthalpy. So uh, we're looking for, uh, sorry, I have to go back again, uh, 3163, uh, 3163. And so we're sitting almost exactly between uh, 300 and 400 degrees Celsius. So I'll estimate that the temperature out is equal to or approximately equal to uh, 350 degrees Celsius. Okay, so so that higher outlet temperature is because we've got uh, an, a non-reversible system and so we haven't been able to extract as much work as we can for the reversible system. So the fact we haven't uh, we haven't taken as much work out means that the final temperature is higher. Okay, so the temperature hasn't gone down as much. Okay, thank you.